Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Django All Auth. So the goal for this video is to show you how to set it up so you can get the typical email and password sign up, but also the ability to sign in with a third party like Google. And there are many different options for third parties, but for this video, I'm just going to show you Google and the process will be the same for all of them. So if you need any additional help uh, with Django All Auth, beyond this video, feel free to reach out to me. You can go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching or the link in the description below. And you can learn how you can talk to me in a one-on-one -on -one situation where I can help you with Django All Auth or just anything in your Django projects. So with that said, let's get started with implementing Django All Auth into a Django project so you can have this uh, user management system in your projects as well. Okay, so to get started, I have an open project in VS Code. I have a virtual environment already and I already have Django installed. So let me go ahead and start up my Django project. So Django admin start project, I'll call this project and put it in the current directory. Sometimes this hangs for some reason, so I'll just hit control C, but we see it created the project directory for me. Uh, next, I want to install Django All Auth since I haven't installed that yet. So pip install Django dash all auth like that, and it will quickly install. All right, so now that I have that installed, I need to go through some steps to update settings.py to get it to work with Django All Auth. So there are a few things that need to change. I guess the first thing that I can do is I can go to the part where it has authentication backends and it actually doesn't here, so I need to add it. I need to add authentication backends to tell it which backend to use and the backend is going to be the model backend. So this actually comes from Django, not from all auth, but I need to specify it. So this will be authentication underscore backends. It's going to be a list and then the value will be Django contrib auth backends model backend just like that. Okay, so I have that. So now let me go up to my installed apps and let me go ahead and add uh, three things. So the first will be all auth. I'll just put it at the top. The second will be all auth dot accounts. And the last will be all auth social account. And the reason why I have this is because I want to be able to use social accounts to log into my Django app. So the example I'll use in this video is Google, but you can use like other services that have OAuth capability. There are a ton of them, but Google will be the one that I'm using in this video. Next, I need to go down to the middleware and I need to add something to the middleware. So I'll add this to the end of the list. It's going to be all auth dot account dot middleware and then account middleware. So capital A, capital M for this middleware down here. And then the rest of it is lowercase. So all auth account middleware, and then this account middleware is a class. Another thing I'll need eventually, and not necessarily, you can have this uh, set up in the settings. You can also do it in the database, which I'll show you, but this social accounts underscore providers, as an empty dictionary is a good start. So if you wanna add stuff to this later, you can. And then another thing I wanna do is I wanna do email backend. So this isn't exactly necessary, but I'm not going to set up an actual connection to an email server. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Django console email backend, which means that any emails that would be sent by the app are actually just gonna appear in the console. So it's good for testing. So Django core mail, backends.console.email backend. So capital E, capital B on the email backend, and then lowercase for everything else. So that's enough for the settings for now. The next thing I want to do is I want to go to my urls.py and I want to include the all auth URLs. So let me import the include function and then I'll call that here. So path and then account slash, just following the typical Django pattern with the trailing slashes. Then I want to include all auth.urls and because the app is installed, it will be able to find these URLs. So that should be enough. Let me go ahead and migrate everything. So python manage.py migrate. Okay, so we see social account and then the regular auth stuff has been migrated. And then uh, create super user. And I'll just create one so I can get into the admin dashboard. So Anthony is my name. Uh, I'll use Anthony at Pretty Print it as my email address. And then I'll use my typical 
testing password of just password one, which is too common, but I'm going to bypass that anyway. All right, so now let me go ahead and start up my app. So Python manage.py, and then I want uh, run server. And I'll go ahead and open this. Okay, so here, of course, there is no like index page, so that's why I get a 404, but I'm not concerned with that at the moment. I'm going to go over to the admin dashboard and log in. And actually what I wanna do is I wanna log in on a different uh, browser session. So I have these browser tabs that allow me to separate out the sessions because on uh, this one, I'm gonna allow for like the normal login process. And then on this, I wanna be an admin. So let me go ahead and log in here. And we see I have uh, these links, email addresses for accounts, for social accounts, uh, we have social accounts, social application tokens, and social applications. And I'll uh, show you that uh, once I add some data to the tables. So let's go back to the code. And before I sign up, so let me just go here. I can go slash accounts with a trailing slash. And then we see all the endpoints that I have available for me. So sign up, log in, log out, and so on. So let me go to sign up. And right now we see it can take in a username and email and password, and it has a sign up button. There are no styles associated with this because it's like the, um, just the template. It's up to you to style it to match your app, of course, because everyone's app looks different, but this is a good starting point. You can just style the HTML or even edit the HTML completely if you like, but this will work even though it doesn't look very good yet. So we see here the email is optional and I can actually turn that off. I want the email to be required. So in my settings.py, I can add more settings. So I want to do accounts authentication method. This will be email. And then I want to say accounts email required equals true, right? So like when I save that and then refresh this, we see the email appears first now because it's the most important and also that it's no longer optional, right? So now with that done, let me go ahead and just create a new account using the signup form. So I'll call this test at test.com. Testing will be the username and then for the password, I'll just put in something complex and hit sign up. And it tries to redirect me to a profile page, which doesn't exist yet. I'll create that in a second. But the idea is the sign up was successful and it's just redirecting me to the place where it thinks I should be. Of course, you can change this redirect as a setting, um, but for now it's just going to the profile endpoint, which doesn't exist. So if I go back over to the code, we see here in the console, uh, this is the email that it sent. So it's like, hello from 127.001. Um, you're receiving this email because user testing and so on. And then you can click on this link to confirm your email. So let me go ahead and copy this link. And let me go over to the admin dashboard so I can show you what happened. So here, I must have hit control C. So let me start the server again. And here, let me uh, load it. So we see here my admin is Anthony and then testing is here. And uh, the email address is test.test.com. Then also over here in email addresses, I have test.test.com. And we see it's the primary email for the user testing. So I can have multiple emails for this user if I like. And then we see here that verified is um, not true yet. So what I'll do, is I'll paste in that link. This is the verification link. And we see successfully signed in as testing. It repeats the first message because of the uh, message flashing, which isn't um, working properly because the profile page never picked up the first message. So this is fine. And then all I have to do is hit this confirm button to confirm my email. Once again, it tries to send me back to my profile. If I refresh here though, we see it's now verified. Right, so this is the basic email functionality that you get with Django All Auth. As you can see, I didn't have to do much to get this to work and I already have like a working uh, user registration system. So of course Django has its own, but this is like more of an extension of what Django already offers you. Um, so it's very easy to set this up and get it working in your app and you will have like a pretty powerful uh, user management system to begin with. Um, but that's not where I wanna stop in this video. I also want to integrate a social login and there are many different social logins Logins that you can use. So let's see if there's like a list here. Um, I believe it's providers. Yeah, so these are all the providers that you can use. So Facebook, Flickr, Google, Instagram, Line, LinkedIn, 
Okta and so on, right? So like I said, in this video, I'm just going to use Google, but the process for setting up the other ones will be pretty similar. So before I get to that, I wanna create that profile page. So what I'll do is I'll stop the app and I'll start a new app in the Django project called Dashboard. This isn't really going to do much, but I need to just create an app. And then I'll add it here at the top, so Dashboard. And inside of the views for Dashboard, so I'll go to dashboardviews.py, I want to create that profile view. So it's gonna be a function profile. I'm just gonna return a template called profile.html. And let me go ahead and create a templates directory here. And inside the templates directory, I'll create that profile.html. And all I wanna do here is just add a header saying like logged in as, and then we can do request.user username, right? So request is automatically injected into the template. And another thing I can do is I can add a link uh, to log out. So I'll say uh, counts log out or log out, that's what I want, a URL. And then this will be log out as a link and that should uh, allow the user to log out. And then finally, I need to uh, add a URL. So I'll just add it here. I'll say from uh, dashboard import views, and I'll add this to the URL. So we'll say path profile. And I think it's actually accounts profile, right? Because that's where the, yeah, accounts profile. So accounts first slash profile. And then this will be views.profile, and then the name will just be profile here. Okay. So now let me try starting the app again. Manage.py run server. And if I refresh this here, we see I'm logged in as testing. And if I click on the logout link, it gives me uh, this button to confirm that I want to log out. I can hit sign out here. And then, of course, I, if I wanted to log in again, I can go to accounts slash login and then just use the test at test.com and then the password, sign in. And I think I already forgot, test at test.com. Okay, did I forget my password? I think I just forgot the password that I used because uh, I just needed a complex password and I let my fingers type. Uh, but the idea is of course, like, you know, you have an email address, test at test.com, and then you have some password associated with it, which I already forgot. Let me try a different one. Yeah, I already forgot my password. But as you can see, there's a reset password link. I guess I can show you that since I forgot my own password. And here on the console, it should give you the link. So I'll copy the link, go here, and then I can put in a new password. So I'll put in this new password here, change password. Now I can sign in test at test.com. And my email still isn't working. So that just makes me think I forgot something in the setup and I feel like I did. So let's see, authentication backends. Yeah, I think I need to add something to authentication backends here. Because this is what Django uses to determine like, um, you know, if a username and password is correct. So I can add it to the list. And it's going to be all auth backends and the authentication backend. So let me go ahead and save that and try this again. So tests at test.com, put in the password, and now it's working. Yes, yeah, so I just forgot that one setting. But as we can see, uh, the password reset part worked just fine. It's just I uh, forgot to add one setting uh, to the project. Okay, so now that I have this page set up, I'm going to go ahead and log out because I want to enable the, the social login, right? So if I go to account slash sign up, I want there to be an option to sign up with Google. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to go to my installed apps and add all auth dot social account dot providers dot Google, right? So I can add that. And then next what I wanna do is I wanna go to the admin dashboard go down to social applications and add one. And I'll select Google. So we see Google is the only thing in the list because I uh, added the app to the settings. I'll just call this Google. And I need a client ID and a secret key. 
So I can get that from the Google Developer dashboard. So just make sure you're in your project and in APIs and services. And then you wanna go to the credentials link on the left. Once you have credentials open, you go to create credentials, OAuth client ID. And then here the application type will be a web application. The name doesn't really matter unless you have multiple. And then the redirect URI is going to be HTTP, uh, 127001, port 8000. And then you're gonna have the slash accounts, slash Google, slash login, slash callback here. So this once again is auto-generated by Jingle All Auth, so it, it's already there. And I'm not using localhost, I'm using 127001. So I can go ahead and create this. And of course, when you deploy this to production, uh, those values will be different for the redirect URI. So it's going to be your actual domain, not localhost. But when you're testing, you can just use localhost. So we see here I have a client ID and a client secret. I'm going to copy the client ID and put it in this client ID field here. And then I'll copy the client secret and I'll put that in the secret key field here and hit save. All right. So that's all I need for the Google Cloud part. And now when I go here, let me close the profile page. Now we see this extra section here or use a third party Google. So now when I click on this and click on the continue, it takes me to the Google sign in. So I'll select my accounts and then it logs me in and it just assigns a username for me. So uh, because I already use Anthony as like the original account, uh, this just puts Anthony too. Now let's go over to my users. We see Anthony, so that's the admin user. Then we have Anthony2 that was just created using my Google email. So if I click on this, we see there's no password for this, but it takes in the first and last name from my Google account and the email address. We see here under email addresses, uh, the email address is here. It is already verified because it comes from Google. So Google has taken the, the step to verify for me. And then under social accounts, we see Anthony too. And then we just see information associated with my account, right? So the extra data, um, like a profile picture. I don't think I have a profile picture under that account, but it has my name and some other stuff as well. And then for tokens, uh, there's nothing here for tokens because it's not necessary, but social accounts and social applications, right? So if you wanted more information about the user, like you can use uh, something called scopes and uh, you can ask for more information, but typically for a login system, uh, this is all you need. And of course, if I were to log out, sign out here and then log back in. So accounts, uh, log in and do the third party thing again it's just gonna log me in right away because I'm already logged into Google. Google knows that I've approved this app for OAuth, so it just uh, redirects me back to the profile page right away. So as you can see, setting up uh, Django All Auth with both the uh, typical login system of like emails and passwords, and also with the social login is pretty straightforward. And uh, like I said, you wanna like modify the templates to look better, or the CSS at least, uh, but that's just, because your app is gonna look different from everyone else's. So you need to decide like how you want it to look in your app, but they give you the forms and everything. Um, so those are the, the foundational things that you need when you're setting up uh, a project with a Django All Auth. Of course, you can modify this to suit your project, but this is like the basics of it. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk Talk to you next time.